Holy smokes, everyone. We just got huge new amounts of data and proof that the current stock market sell-off could get a whole lot worse. In this video, I'm gonna be going over the statements that Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger made about the stock market, about how it is broken, how it's so overvalued, how they've been net sellers of stocks and hoarding huge amounts of cash, waiting for the blood to hit the streets and for fear to be really in there in the markets because there's not much fear now. And I'm also gonna go over how this gambling group has been the ones that have lifted the market, but they're also gonna be the one that sends it tumbling. And not only this, we're gonna be going over all the indicators that are screaming, flashing red right now, and are telling us the story that a huge correction is about to come. Okay, let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. Okay, so we all know that the NASDAQ, the tech-heavy stocks have been selling off, and the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones is starting to slip from its all-time highs, and the markets are starting to show cracks. But why is this happening? Look at this, everyone. Robinhood, one of the biggest stock trading apps in the US, is turning the stock market into a casino, Warren Buffett says. Now let's dig a bit deeper into this article to see exactly what Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger thinks of this. Legendary investor and Berkshire Hathaway CEO Warren Buffett slammed stock trading app Robinhood saying it's turning the market into a casino. And that's exactly right. Look at the margin debt. Look at all the people using crazy call put options. Look at the people on Wall Street bets and there's huge amounts of YOLOing where people are risking their life savings in order to have a chance at getting life-changing wealth. And why there is one or two stories of success, for every one or two stories of success, there's thousands of people that have lost everything. But Robinhood is taking advantage of its users and selling its order flow to the market makers. And this is how Wall Street is rigging the markets and is taking advantage of the little guy. And this is what gets me so mad. Listen to this. So instead of earning commissions on trades, it says, instead the app relies on a practice called payment for order flows as its profit engine. The practice, while common, has often been criticized for its lack of transparency. And what has been happening lately with all these zero commission trading apps? Every time there's huge amounts of volatility, the apps crash and they send your order flow to the big hedge funds, to the big insiders, and they do insider trading and sell or buy before you can. Listen to what he has to say about this. If you cater to those gambling chips where people have money in their pocket for the first time and you tell them they can make 30 or 40 or 50 trades a day and you're not charging them any commission, but you're selling their order flow or whatever, I hope we don't have much more of it. And that's exactly right. These little guys think they've found a way to get at the hedge funds of big institutions, but really they're the ones being played. And this is why I've been telling people not to be a fear monger or a doomsdayer, but I'm trying to open your eyes to show those people that they're being played, screwed and fooled. But no, these people don't wanna hear it. They only wanna think money printer goes burr, stocks only go up. And if you tell them that a correction is coming, they go, la la la, you're just spreading FUD, fear. And they go and they cuddle their, their stock portfolio and they have that huge amounts of hopium that all their stocks are gonna go to the moon. And of course, Charlie Munger, he's a straight shooter and he doesn't hold back. Listen to what he has to say about this. I think it's just awful that something like that brought investments from civilized men and decent citizens, Munger says, is deeply wrong. We don't want to make our money selling things that are bad for people. But not only this, let's have a look at what else they're doing. They're telling people to keep on investing, keep on investing for the long term, but they're doing the opposite to what they're saying. Have a look at this. Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway sold a net 4 billion of stocks and slowed buybacks in the fourth quarter. Now what you have to know about Warren Buffett is he's what's called a market mover. So if he says straight up that the stock market's in a bubble, it's gonna crash, well of course the SEC would charge him for manipulating the market's market manipulation, so he can't say that, but he's pretty much getting the closest to what he can say that the stock market is in a bubble and that a huge decline is coming. And not only this, but look at this, Warren Buffett is still hesitant to buy stocks. He's still hoarding a huge amount of cash. He's holding $146 billion because Warren Buffett, he's very patient. He doesn't FOMO in like all these new gamblers, uh, all these new retail investors that got in the market in April last year and think that you, know, you just put your money in any stock and it goes up 50%. He's patiently waiting. And what do you think he's waiting for? Are we gonna enter in a double dip recession or is this 40% crash that we had in the stock market last year gonna look like child's play compared to the next market crash that's coming? And people, I'm not saying this to be a doomsdayer. 
I'm trying to protect you because you know how many people got wrecked in 2000 and 2008 by these big, huge hedge funds? Millions of people got wrecked. Retirees' funds were drained. People lost everything. And I don't want that to happen again. So someone has to be out there to call out what's really happening in the markets and the risks because so many other people say, just put your money in, keep putting it in. Stocks only go up. You got nothing to fear. But I'll show you the proof. Look at this. Hedge funds reloaded their shorts just in time for a tech payday. So what's been happening is the, the retail investors have been piling into these tech stocks. All the finance gurus on YouTube are telling them to pile in, get in, buy the dip. Well, little did they know that this dip has turned into a 15 layer dip and this dip ain't nothing. Buying the dip is more like when there's a 10, 20, 30% dip, not just a 1% dip that continues for another month. And these hedge funds have been taking advantage of this. The insiders are selling and they're shorting while you're the one that's gonna get caught holding the bag. But I know what you're thinking, Michael, but I wanna make money, man. Okay, you wanna make money? What I've been telling you for the past month is get out of stocks or take a portion of your profits out of stocks, not financial advice, but just what I've been doing and put it into a broad-based commodity ETF or whatever commodity ETF that you think is going to do well or individual commodity. Look at this. The Invesco DB Commodity Index Tracking Fund, it's up 12% over the past month. But what has the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ done in the past month? Well, over the past month, the S&P 500 has gone nowhere and the NASDAQ is down around 5% from its all-time highs. So if you did listen to me, you would have made some sweet gains. So no, I'm not just trying to be a doomsdayer. I'm also trying to teach you how to build wealth and protect your wealth because what I saw a month ago when the stock market reached its all-time highs, that every single indicator that says the stock market is overvalued and in a bubble was screaming at me, flashing red. But wait, there's more. What you have to think about is what has been lifting the stock market or what stopped the market from crashing last year was money printer go burr and the Fed dropping interest rates from 1% to zero. But what would happen this time if the stock market crashes? The Fed can't drop interest rates any lower, and they've already announced QE infinity. So you can't go any higher than infinity unless you act like a five-year-old and say, we're going to be doing QE infinity plus one. So the tools the Fed used last time to prevent a stock market crash, say, for example, the stock market does start crashing, you say, oh, we're going to buy more treasury bonds. Well, the market's going to be like, we have already been doing that. So the sell-off will continue. And another huge thing that's happening in the markets that the Fed was terrified of was cyber risk. And we just had a cyber attack. And now that's sending fears and shivers down the market spines because if another cyber attack happens, not just on the oil pipeline, but on the stock market or a big financial institution, you better believe that the market sell-off would accelerate very fast. Now again, going back to how the stock market has turned into a casino and it's attracted a lot of gamblers that couldn't go to the casinos last year, well, these people, they're just in it for the short-term gains. So even if the market doesn't crash, what would happen if the market just went sideways or just slowly bled every day for six months? These people, they're just in it for the short-term, they're just in it for the gains. So if there's not gonna be any fun, any action in the stock market, they're just going to sell off everything and go on to the next big thing, which will just be more selling pressure. And those hedge funds will be making bank on those big shorts. All right, I'll just hide myself here. So you want proof. You want cold hard facts, data, that this stock market is so extremely overvalued. Look at this. This is the chart of the S&P 500 dividend yield. And what you need to know about this chart is, if the yield on the S&P 500 falls down below the 10-year U.S. Treasury, which right now, I'll bring it up here, is about 1.6%, then that means the stock market is severely overvalued. And the dividend yields on the S&P 500 has never been lower since, guess what, the 2000 tech stock market bubble where we had Amazon and all the tech stocks fall over 80%. And another huge risk for the markets is inflation. We all know inflation is much higher than they're reporting, but if the official CPI number comes in much higher today when it's released, the market sell-off will accelerate. If it's a bit better, then maybe there may be some buying of the dip, but in the long term, we are in a downtrend bearish cycle. And of course, with all the supply shortages, 
the cost of living skyrocketing out of control, with small businesses having to lift wages to compete with government, that's just even more pressure on inflation. And that means the Fed is gonna come under more and more pressure to taper its quantitative easing and to start lifting interest rates much sooner than they expected. And I've all shown you the chart of where the S&P 500 and the Federal Reserve balance sheet is pretty much 99% correlated. Okay, but if I haven't convinced you enough that we're in a crazy, crazy bubble, look at this. This is the S&P 500 PE ratio and has now just eclipsed the 2000 tech stock market bubble with a PE ratio of 44 when the average is 17. And another chart here, margin debt, which I've been showing before. Every time margin debt hits an all-time highs like in 2000 and in 2007, we see a huge decline because once everyone's money in and then once everyone's leveraged on debt to put money in, there's no more money to lift the markets higher. And the hedge funds and the insiders see this and they start selling and then they start shorting to profit from those shorts. And if they sell off and they cause a fall of say 10, 20, 30%, well then those margin loans are gonna get called and then that's when we'll see the seven to 10% drops in a day if all of a sudden everyone gets liquidated at once. And if there wasn't enough uncertainty in the markets and the stock market hates uncertainty, every time there's uncertainty, they sell and they ask questions later. There's risks of capital gains increasing from 19% all the way up to 39% uh, with Joe Biden's announcement. And he's also going to increase corporate taxes, which I don't think the stock market has really priced this in. That just means the price to earnings ratios will get even crazier. And something that I'm seeing happening and I think maybe not many people are talking about is, I think a lot of these retail investors or a lot of money is now being taken out of the stock market and it's being put in commodities, but it's also being put into crypto. If we look at the total uh, cryptocurrency market cap, it's gone from around $1 trillion this year to two and a half trillion. So that's one and a half trillion dollars that could have gone into stocks that is now in cryptocurrency, which is having a weakening effect on the stock market because there's not as much money going into these retail stocks anymore. Okay, so now that we know we're pretty much screwed, what can we do to prepare? For all my loyal viewers watching, you already know because I've been screaming, begging for you to listen that the stock market is overvalued and start diversifying into some defensive assets like commodities. Again, I still think commodities are undervalued even though they've had some crazy high growth over the past year. We may see a bit of a pullback uh, coming soon because of the crazy high growth, but compared to their long-term averages, commodities are still much lower than their all-time highs in the 80s, 90s, and 2008. Precious metals like silver, Silver is still lower today than it was in the 1980s. When you factor in inflation, silver should be at least $100, but we all know the banks are manipulating the precious metal markets. But if the manipulation does stop, I think precious metals are going to skyrocket. And while all the eyes and ears are all looking at the cryptocurrency altcoins like Dogecoin and other altcoins, Bitcoin dominance has dropped in the cryptocurrency markets, so it may be a good opportunity to buy Bitcoin at this reduced value from its all-time high. But again, it's very hard to price Bitcoin or value Bitcoin, but I am bullish on the long term. But what normally happens in the cryptocurrency markets is 18 months after the halving event that happened in May last year when the reward for Bitcoin gets dropped in half, we enter in a bear market. So that means September to November at the end of this year, going over history, who knows, past performance not always a predictor of future performance that may not happen this time, but late this year, we should be entering in a cryptocurrency bear market, and that may create some great buying opportunities. So everyone, I hope all this data and information really opens your eyes to how much bad shape the markets are in right now, how overvalued they are right now, and why you seriously need to look at your portfolio do your research, start looking at some alternative assets just besides stock because I think we're going to be in for a wild ride over the next six months. For all my law viewers and subscribers still watching, you're awesome. If you haven't already, please tap that like and subscribe button. And again, I just want to say thank you for helping us hit 50,000 subscribers. And for all of those of you thinking of joining, I'll keep you up to date on the latest that's happening in the stock market, the housing market and global finance news. If you're bored, I'll put up some of my other videos here. I'll see you there.